Good morning, Legacy Church. Good morning. <laughs> I think uh, everybody's still kind of waking up. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So as we get started, um, just want to welcome everybody here. If you're if you're a guest, you know that we have our our connection card. Just fill those out. And even if you're one of our regulars, just make sure you fill that out if you have prayer requests um, and put that in the um, offering when we do that later. Um, So I'm going to be reading from Psalms 102. And it starts, The nation will fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. For the Lord will build up Zion. He will appear in his glory He will regard the prayer of the destitute and will not despise the supplication. Let this be recorded for generations to come so that a people yet unborn may praise the Lord that he looked down from his holy height. From heaven, the Lord looked at the earth to hear the groans of the prisoners, to set free those who were doomed to die that men may declare in Zion the name of the Lord and in Jerusalem his praise when people gather together in kingdoms to worship the Lord. Lord, we just pray over your people, Lord, for the people that are coming, Lord, for the people that are here, Lord, for the, for Princeton, for, for McKinney, for Melissa, for Anna, Lord, we just pray for your people that are living in these areas, Lord, that you lift them up, Lord, that they know you, that they praise you, that they they worship you this morning, Lord. Lord, we come to you knowing that you are Lord. We ask that your blessings just flow in this area, Lord, and that we worship and we praise everything that you are doing in our lives, everything you're going to do in our lives. Lord, we just praise you for being Jesus, for being Lord of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. You can go ahead and stay and we'll enter a time of worship. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Yes, I do Feel the miracle that I just can't get over. My name is registered in heaven. Yeah, my praise belongs to you forever. Oh, this is my testimony from dead to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony, this is my testimony. Come together sons and daughters, bought with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son, and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Yes, our God will finish what He started. Oh, this is my testimony from dead to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Yo. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Oh. Greater things 
are still to come Oh, I believe If I'm not dead, you're not done This I know Greater things are still to come Oh, I believe If I'm not dead, you're not done Oh, greater things are still to come Oh, I believe This is my testimony From dead to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony Now I'm alive This is my testimony From dead to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony, this is my testimony, oh, 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 oh,
Lordy, that's your testimony this morning. Lord, we need you more and more, Lord. You heard your children. You hear your children now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You answered prayers back then. And you will answer now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You are providing then. You are providing now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You moved in power then. God moves in power now. You are the same God, you are the same God, you were a healer then, you are a healer now, you are the same God, you are the same God, you were a savior then, you are a savior now, you are the same God. You are the same God, oh God, my God, I need you lifted up. How we need you now. How I need you. We stand on your faithfulness, oh rock, oh rock of ages. I'm standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. Watching over your people today, Lord. The captives, you're freeing hearts right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You are the captives. I feel your touch right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. We worship you, Lord. You're the same. Love you, Jesus. He's listening for the sound of your voice. Come on, praise him. We love you, Lord. He you're the same. Calling on the Holy Spirit, Almighty River, come and fill me again. Come and fill me again. Come and fill me. Come and fill me again. Would you just slip your hands? Lord heaven and let's just praise him right now oh God we need you God we need you God we need you to intervene Lord on behalf of your people the nation of Israel we stand in the gap for her Lord yeah we stand in the gap 
time for all of America to be saved and all the nations of the earth, Lord. Oh, yes. We need you. We need you. We need you. We need you. Oh, God, my God, I need you. Oh, God, my God, I need you. When Jesus was restored, and where was despair when my God split the shores? And where was the fear when the Lord took your breath? When He stood in power by the grave that He left? Nowhere, 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 nowhere was the fear when my King resurrects? Nowhere. Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere was the king when my king resurrected. Nowhere. It's nowhere. Where was the sorrow when dry bones arose? And where was the pain when the sick touched the robe? And where was disgrace when the king lay to rest? The stronghold of sin by the grace he possessed. Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere is the fear when my king resurrects. Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere was the doubt when my king conquered death. Nowhere, 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 nowhere was the fear when my King resurrects. Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere was the doubt when my King conquered death. It's nowhere, it's nowhere to be found. Peace, Lord, where you are, there is joy, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, we are saved. Yeah. If you need a miracle in your life, I want you to say this part with me right now. Here we go. I see joy rising. I hear hope calling. I see fear hiding. And I hear chains falling. Woo! I see you all shaking, and I hear doubt running, cause my God's on his way, yes he is coming, I see joy rising, I hear hope calling, 
and I see fear hiding, and I hear chase falling, and I see you all shaking, and I hear town running, cause my God's on his way, yes he is now here, now we're now here in his presence my shame disappears now here now here i stand on the feet when jesus is near now here now here now here now here in his presence my shame disappears now here now But Jesus is near yeah. I see joy rising I hear hope calling And I see fear hiding And I hear chains falling I see walls shaking And I hear doubt running Cause my God's on His way Yes, He is coming I see joy rising And I hear hope calling and I see fear hiding. Oh, I hear chains falling. I see walls shaking. And I hear doubt running. Cause my God's on His way. Yes, He is coming. My God's on His way. My God's on His way. My God's on His way. Yes, He is coming. My God's on His way. My God's on His way. My God's on His way. Yes, He is coming. Yes, He is coming. Oh, my God's on His way. My God's on His way. My God's on His way. There's nothing too big for Him. Nothing too big for my God. Hallelujah. Oh, I see joy rising. Hallelujah. So that song, that song says that fear is hiding. Don't go looking for it. It should be Jesus is coming back and we believe that. Amen. Soon and very soon. For those in Spanish, pronto si me pronto. That's the only thing I know. That's the only thing I know. Father, we just thank you for your goodness. Lord, I hear chains falling, Father. You, you are here in this place. Your word says where two or three are gathered together in your name that you are there. And Lord, where you are, miracles happen. And Father, there's some, Lord, that are chained, Lord. Lord, chained to an addiction, chained to depression, chained to anxiety. Lord, I hear. I hear chains falling. Lord, I, I hear doubt running. Lord, you are here, and Father, you haven't given us a spirit of fear. You haven't given us a spirit of doubt, but of power and of love and a sound mind. God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We're just going to continue an attitude of worship as we prepare our hearts for giving. God loves a cheerful giver. And we give cheerfully because we give it in worship. We give it in obedience. We give it in thankfulness. We give it because God asked us to, but we also know that the measure we give is the measure he'll bless us back. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this offering, God. We thank you for every gift and every giver. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you provide every need, that you take care of us, God. God, I once was young, but now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. And God, we thank you, Lord, Lord, that you take care of your children. Lord, we trust you. And Lord, there's even some here that, that, are, that are struggling in their faith in finances. And Father, Father, your word says when we are faithless, you are still faithful. And God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you take care of your children. And God, we just give you thanks and we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.
can't wait for eternity. Join the song they're already singing. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Just a bow down. Just a bow down before your throne. See your face. See your face. I'll cry out because you're holy.
Sing that one more time, hallelujah. problem you have. Worthy is 
the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Just let that stir in your spirit. Just let that move in your heart. Oh, he's worthy. What is he worthy for? Oh, he's worthy because you once were lost, but now you're found. Oh, he's worthy. Just think about where you used to be and where you are now. How good God has been to you. Just think about it. Ponder on that. He's worthy of praise. He's worthy of praise. Just think about where you are now and where you could be without Him. Oh, He's worthy. Just think about how He's taken care of you. He's never left you. He's never forsaken you. He's never left you stranded on an island. He is always with you. Just think about that. He's worthy. He's worthy. Just rest in Him right now. Just rest in Him. Just listen for the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Some of you need encouragement today. And God wants to remind you that He has plans for you. He sees you right where you are. He hasn't forgotten you. Some of you need strength this morning. Strength today. You need to just pause and realize that He, he is your strength. Stop trying to do it by yourself. Stop, stop trying to do it on your own. He's waiting for you to come to Him. To give Him your burdens. To give him your problems, to give him your hurdles and your mountains and your giants. Some of you are like Paul and Silas, and you feel like you're locked up in a in a prison. You just need to do like Paul and Silas and just sing out in praise and how good and how great God is and stop looking at the prison doors. Stop looking at the lock on that door. Stop looking at the other prisoners in that place. And you, all by yourself, start singing out praise. Sing to Him how good and how great and how wonderful and how righteous and how holy and how faithful He is. I believe the Lord is saying to some of you, rest. It's not the word for this time of season, but he's saying rest. Rest. Well, pastor, what does that mean? It means to get in his presence. I'll tell you, I'll guarantee you this. You put on some worship music before you go to bed at night, you're going to sleep like a baby. Get in his presence. Get in his presence. Rest. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Lord, there's some that need a specific word today. I, I just pray your Holy Spirit just whisper in their ears. Brother, sister, friend, let me tell you this. If you're trying to hear a shout from him, you're not going to hear him shout. 
to you. He comes in a still, small voice. Why? Because he wants to be close to you when he speaks to you. Listen for that still, small voice. He loves you. He's going to speak to you. The word tells us that he ordains the steps of the righteous. He plans the paths of the godly. He hasn't forgotten what he has sketched out for you, what the blueprint for your life is, what the plan and purpose for you. He hasn't forgotten. Just listen today. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you know the plans that you have for us. They're bigger than what we could ever ask or imagine. Lord, there's some of us who got a pretty big imagination. But Lord, we come to you and Lord, we surrender our lives for you to work it out. Work it out in us. God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for you are worthy. You are worthy. Let's just lay our hands on our children right now. And if they're not nearby you, just stretch your hands, stretch your heart, whatever direction they may be. Let's pray for our kids. Father, we thank you for children. They are a blessing. They are a blessing, God. And we thank you, Lord. Lord, that you have given us these children. And Father, we just, we just speak, Lord, wisdom into our kids and wisdom into our children and, and favor and blessing, Lord, that every, every step they take, Lord, we just speak favor, favor, favor. But Lord, we pray that only the doors that you have designed, the, only the doors that you have created for them are be the doors that they open. Lord, I pray that, that they understand that they never force themselves through any door that's not opened. But they recognize your plan and your purpose in their hearts, in their spirit, in their mind. Lord, that they recognize your plan, your purpose, and they walk in that way. Lord, we thank you for protection over our children. Lord, they live in, a, in, a, in an age and a day where the enemy is coming in. But like a flood, you're going to raise up a standard against it. You're going to raise it up for our children. For our marriage, Father. For the best thing we can do for our kids is have a good marriage and love our spouse. So that we can so, show them the love that you have. God, we pray over it. We, give, we pray and speak a spirit of discernment over our children. Father, that they would recognize the truth and never depart from it. We give you thanks for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. All right. Give him praise. Yeah. Yeah, he's worthy. Amen. Our children are, are released to go to their specially designed significant. Thank you. Uh, their children. And if you're with us, two things, yeah. Uh, Michael is going to hand out some communion. We're getting ready for communion. But if you're. You guys know, you, I can't believe you're sitting down. I, just because you know it's time to go and greet somebody and say hello to somebody. So we're going to give you about 60, 90 seconds to greet, and then everyone's going to come and give us uh, some uh, announcements. You're good.
announcements. Are you doing announcements? Good morning, Legacy. It's on, it's on. All right, we, we always do this. Turn it up, turn it up. Good morning, Legacy. That's better, all right. Um, hi, I will be giving you your announcements today. Um, today, after service, YMT and Levites till 2 p.m., um, there will be food provided. So please stay along. Um, no, that's for YMT and Levites. Yeah, all right. Um, ladies feeding Yorkshire residents Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. So please bring sides and desserts. Um, Wednesday is secure and prepare, or is that over? Wednesday evening? Someone, someone answer, please. No. All right. No prayer. Youth. No. All right. Well, no youth. All right. So please turn your attention to the screens and thank you. Do this in remembrance of me. He broke the bread and poured the wine, a symbol of pouring out his love for all mankind. In communion, this promise could not be broken. This holy token of our faith was coined once Jesus had spoken. Do this in remembrance of me. What was it like at that table with you? The bread easily broken, the cup bittersweet. Did this sacred moment feel a bit out of the blue when you honored the disciples with newly washed feet? When you took your chair, was it clear that mercy also had a seat? Do this in remembrance of me. Knowing that soon your body would be broken and scattered, shattered into pieces, seemingly out of control. Hoping this supper would be a reminder to all that you would be broken so that we could be whole. That we are the body of Christ and over time we disperse, wandering in the desert with hunger and thirst. Pieces of Christ lost without community or connection, forgetting that we are all a part of God's perfect reflection. So we do this in remembrance of you, because you gave of yourself to collect us together. You communed in unity, ensuring that all can enter to remember that we are fully known. There is room. Do this in remembrance of me. He broke the bread and poured the wine, a symbol of pouring out his love for all mankind. In communion, this promise could not be broken. This holy token of our faith was coined once Jesus had spoken. Do this in remembrance of me. What was it like at that table with you? The bread easily broken, the cup bittersweet. Did this sacred moment feel a bit out of the blue when you honored the disciples with newly washed feet? When you took your chair, was it clear that mercy also had a seat? Do this in remembrance of me. Knowing that soon your body would be broken and scattered, shattered into pieces, seemingly out of control. Hoping this supper would be a reminder to all that you would be broken so that we could be whole. That we are the body of Christ and over time we disperse, wandering in the desert with hunger and thirst. Pieces of Christ lost without community or connection, forgetting that we are all a part of God's perfect reflection. So we do this in remembrance of you, because you gave of yourself to collect us together. You communed in unity, ensuring that all can enter to remember that we are fully known. There is room at the table for all, that everything is forgiven. You keep no record when we fall, that we are seen, we are loved. There is beauty beyond, that we can return to the place where we've always belonged. The wine poured, the bread broken, we prepare to willingly surrender. All as a symbol that to make anything whole again, we must do the work. 
to remember. Amen. If you have not been served and would like to participate and celebrate with us in communion, just raise your hand. We want to make sure that you have the opportunity to join us. Yeah. Thank you, Abel. You know, each of us, we have a, a vision or a, a mental image of what Jesus is like. Some of us, it may be inspired by the Bible. And some of us by a by a great imagination some it might be by a vision that we had but in some way we can all picture him in our hearts and our mind but i'm going to read from the word to give you a picture of jesus jesus is light isaiah 9 2 it says the people walking in dark darkness have seen great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Second Corinthians 4, 6 says, God once said, let, there, let the light shine out of the darkness. And this is the same God who made his light shine in our hearts. He gave us this light by letting us know the glory of God that is in the face of Jesus. John 1, 4, it says, in him was life, and that life was light for the people of the world. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overpowered the light. The true light was coming into the world. The true light gives light to all. John 3, 19 said, Jesus said, people are judged by this fact. I am the light from God that has come into the world. He who follows the true way comes to the light. Then the light will show that the things he has done were done through God. 1 John 1, 7 says, If we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. We already talked about the word that says where two or three are gathered together in his name, that he is there with them and he is with us now. For some, he's reaching out to you. He's reaching out and saying, I'm here for you. I, I know where you are, and I love you, and I care for you. And as we come to the communion table, we celebrate what Jesus has done, for we know that the wages of sin is death. And Jesus came so that we could, we could come together, and we could celebrate, and we could, we could know that, that we are reunited with God because of the price that he paid and what he had done for us on Calvary. So as we come to the communion table, I just want to pray as we pray. Let us take the bread and let us pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the body that was broken. I thank you for the blood that was shed so that we could be reunited with you, so that we could celebrate even this day what you have done for us. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you have paid a price that we could never pay on our own. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the body that was broken, that by these stripes that we are healed, Lord. Lord, we thank you for, for new life, a new way, a new work in every single one of us because of what you have done on the cross. I give you thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us eat together. Let us take the cup. Father, we thank you for the light. And let that light shine upon our face, Lord. Let that light be a fountain within us, Lord. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. For you have delivered us from death and our feet from stumbling, that we may walk before God in the light of life. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the blood that cleanses every sin. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let us drink together. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you as we remember what Jesus has done. What a special time of year we are celebrating God. Is, Lord, it's a special time where we're challenged to be thankful 
But Lord, let our heart always be thankful for what Jesus has done. Lord, your word tells us that in all things, all things be thankful. No matter what we're going through, no matter what trial, no matter what, what tribulation, God, we thank you, God, to know that you have paid a price and that we are, we are forever on our way to heaven, God. God, we thank you for new life in our hearts, new life in our bodies, new life in our, our homes, God. We thank you, God, for what Jesus has done for us. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just have a short video that I'd like you to watch. Lord, I'm struggling. Show me what I have to be thankful for. struggling. Show me what I have to be thankful for. Kind of hits home. Obviously, this week is Thanksgiving, and First Thessalonians 5.18, it says, Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. One of my pastors of the past was in the Air Force, and he was stationed in Pakistan. He was living for the Lord in Pakistan, and a lot of times he would go to Bible studies and as he came home after his tour of duty, he got on the plane and his mentor in Pakistan said these words to him and said, Gary, you are now headed to the hardest place in the world to live for Jesus in America. Just as the video that you have seen, it, it's hard for us as Americans to be thankful. It is so hard for us that once a year we have to remind ourselves that we should be thankful, number one, for the country that we live in. 
Two weeks ago, I went to Nicaragua. I'll share more about that in a few weeks, but Nicaragua, the minimum wage in Nicaragua is $160 a month. $6 a day. If you just live in America, no matter how poor you are, you are in the top 5% of the richest people in the world. Just living in America, and yet, I don't know what to be thankful for. A thankful life is what I want to talk to you about. It can be difficult, like we have seen in the video. And so today, I'm just going to give you five things, a list for a thankful life. Starting in Genesis 22, talking about Abraham. Abraham has waited years to have a son. Finally, Abraham has had his son Isaac. And shortly after, God has told Abraham to take his son onto the mountain and go and sacrifice him. I can only imagine the thoughts that were going through Abraham's mind as God was telling him to take his son, knowing the promises that Abraham would have the descendants of the, of the stars, and yet God was telling him to sacrifice his only son. Abraham was obedient in doing what God has asked and had taken Isaac up to the mountain. And on their way to the place where they were going to sacrifice in Genesis 22, 7, it says this, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, the fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. A whole series of sermons can be preached in that. But that's not what we're here for today. We're going to jump to verse 14. Where they saw the lamb and the lamb was provided for them. And when the lamb was shown, Abraham named the place Yahweh Yireh or Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. To this day, people still use the name as a proverb. On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. I say you have something to be thankful for, that the God that you serve is your provider. He is Jehovah Jireh, the God who will take care of you. We said, I said it this morning already. David has said in the Psalms, you'll read, I once was young and now I'm old, old but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. Even in America, there's times where you need God to provide. It may not be something financial, but it may be something emotional. It may be something in the middle of your family. It may be in the middle of a battle you're fighting. It may be in the middle of the circumstances. You may have just gotten back from the doctor and you need Jehovah Jireh. Philippians 4.19, it says this, And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his riches, from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Listen to me. There is no need that God cannot supply. There is no need that God cannot supply. I, I give thanks that God is my provider. Number two. It seems that God revealed precious things about himself and to the Israelites when they worshipped him in times of trouble. In those times, he would disclose a new name for himself, a name that helped them understand him better. Sometimes it was in the middle of a national crisis. We find an example of this in Judges chapter 6. This chapter opens by telling how the Midianites were destroying the fields and villages to the Israelites, making life utterly miserable for them. The Midianites wanted to drive them out of Cana once and for all. Judges 6, 4 tells us this. The Midianites were camping in the land and destroying crops as far away as Gaza. 
They left the Israelites with nothing to eat, taking all the sheep, goats, cattle, and donkeys. These enemy hordes, coming with their livestock and tent, were as thick as locusts. They arrived on droves of camels too numerous to count, and they stayed until the land was stripped bare. But then the Lord sent the prophet. In fact, the prophet wasn't even named. The word just tells us in verse 8, the Lord sent the prophet to the Israelites. He said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I brought you up out, out, up out of slavery in Egypt. I rescued you from the Egyptians and from all who oppressed you. I drove your enemies out and gave you their land. I told you, I am the Lord your God. You must not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live. But you have not listened to me. You see, the Israelites were worried about their enemies. But God told them, don't worry about your enemies. Don't you remember how I brought you out of Egypt? Don't you remember the victories I gave you over the Canaanites when you first entered the land? Don't, didn't I tell you not to be afraid of pagan gods of these people? You guys know one of my favorite songs is a song that has this in it. Don't tell me he can't do it. Don't tell me he can't do it. My God will supply all your needs. My God will give you all the victories you need. My God will take care of you. He will walk with you and talk with you. He will be with you every step of the way. Don't tell me he can't do it. You see, a couple years ago, I talked to you and preached a message about some of the messes we are in is because of what we have done, not because of what God has done. I would say 90% of our messes are because of what we have done. But God is faithful. See, just like God told the Israelites, don't, don't worship these false gods. Don't worship these pagan gods. Don't live like the world lives. You are called. You are a peculiar people. You are set apart. And if you're at your job and somebody can't tell that you're set apart, you better investigate. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. We better investigate. Investigate your house. You're in this mess because you forgot his promises. You're afraid because you've forgotten how powerful God is. And see, right here in this passage, God was reminding the Israelites of one of the most neglected spiritual truths, the power of praise. The power of praise. Many times we become so anxious, so worried to enlist God's help for a certain problem that we forget to thank Him for what He has already done with us and in us and through us. And when the problem is solved, we tend to say, oh well, I would have gotten those blessings anyway. But then God... God sent an angel to draft a farm boy named Gideon into military duty. You know, can I tell you, there's a lot we can learn from just this little bit. God, in the middle of your problems, may send somebody to you who you would never expect. Sometimes we miss our blessing because... Their blessing is trying to get through to us, and we think that they're not qualified because we haven't seen it. Gideon, God called Gideon to be the captain of a new army that would go out and fight the Midianites. We already seen in that pack package that the Midianites were numbered as many as the locusts. And Gideon saw himself as a most unlikely candidate for that job. And can I tell you, sometimes we do that. We even disqualify ourselves when God calls us to something because we know ourselves too well. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It'd be like God all of a sudden calling me today to go run a marathon. Mm -mm, ain't happening. It just ain't happening, God. It just 
Mm -mm. But <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> but let me tell you, if God did, you know what I would start doing tomorrow? I would do that today. <laughs> but I might, might jog. I might jog at least down to the, the end of the driveway and, and pant my way back up. <sighs> Gideon saw himself as unqualified. So God had to give him some miraculous signs to prove he was serious about it. And you can read it in Judges chapter 6. And finally Gideon was convinced. He, he accepted God's call. And he erected, he, he, he erected an altar on, on that spot as a monument to what God had told him. And see, sometimes, sometimes I tell you this. Sometimes when I, when I give you a scripture and God, God deposits in you that scripture that I'm talking about, even maybe today, I, I tell you, go home and write it on a piece of paper. Put it, put it somewhere where you can continually remind yourself. See, because that's what Gideon did here. He's reminding himself of what God is doing. In Judges chapter 6, verse 24, it says, And Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and named it Yahweh Shalom. Jehovah Shalom, which is the Lord is my peace. The altar remains in Ophrah in the land of the clan of Abazar to this day. What a striking name to name that place. The Lord is my peace. Gideon hadn't even fought the fight yet, and yet he is saying, God is my, my peace, despite no matter what was, I mean, he had this huge threat of the Midianite army, and he had little strength with his Israelite army that Gideon could even get them to get, to, get together. And despite the dreadful prospect of war, Gideon knew that the Lord was his peace. And see, sometimes, some of you, you get up and you go to work and you need to say, Jehovah Shalom. God is my peace. When I go to work today, I'm going to have the peace of God. Some of you need to proclaim it in your marriage. Some of you need to confess it and declare it over your children. Jehovah Shalom. I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for. If you want, now, if you want to live a double life, you come to church and on Sundays, but you know the old time it was it was funny because our preachers were were like this. Our preachers would say, "Some of you guys, you come to church and look like a Christian on Sundays, and you live like the devil the rest of the week." <laughs> well, if you want to live that like, I promise you, you will have no peace. You wonder. Some of you wonder why, man, when I go to church, it's, it's awesome. But boy, when I get home, it's so different. Well, that's because you come into the presence of the Lord. You need to get God's presence in your house. Now, now I know he's everywhere, but you need to begin to play that worship. And you need, you need to have his presence like he is in your life, not only just in within you, but everywhere. It needs to emanate from you. When people come up to you, they should go like, wow, there's something different about that person. And it's the presence of God. You are going to have no peace living just for God on Sundays. I promise you that. But if you want to plunge into the Christian life, and if you want to love the Lord with all your heart, he will be everything to you that he was to Gideon, that he was to Abraham, that he was to any of the heroes in the Bible. Scripture tells us that he is the same yesterday, the same today, and the same forever. He will be the same God that he was to Gideon, that he, and he will also be to you. He is faithful. He is faithful. Come on, are we singing what we believe or are we just singing words? I'm thankful that God is my provider, that he is Jehovah Jireh. I'm thankful that God is my peace, that he's Jehovah Shalom. Number three, God made our bodies and God is able to heal them. He's able to keep them healthy. God demonstrated this to the children of Israel as Moses led them out of the bondage of Egypt. Exodus chapter 15 tells us how the Israelites rejoiced to seeing God deliver them from the Egyptians. 
And you'll remember that, that God parted the Red Sea so that they could cross over on dry ground. And that he let the waters come flooding in on the, on the Egyptian army, the, the, the people that were pursuing them. What a day of victory. What a day. We've declared this year the year of victory. What a victory. Some of you guys should be looking back. We should be looking back at the, the armies that have, have been pursuing us and see them crying out for life preservers. Hey, is there a lifeboat? Somebody call the Coast Guard. You should be hearing from your enemies. Because the water has come in like a flood. Like a flood. What a day of victory that was. And the Israelites celebrated with singing and dancing with Moses' sister Miriam leading the festivities. You can read that in Exodus chapter 15. What a day of victory. But you know what? We're just like the Israelites. Three days later. Three days When they were unable to find good drinking water, the Israelites started grumbling. Like the guy in the video. Lord, I'm str I can't find anything to be thankful for. That's just like us, too. We forget God's, God's goodness to us so easily. As soon as, as soon as a problem arises, we forget how big, how wonderful, how great... But in this moment of distress, God spoke to his people through Moses and revealed another name for himself, a name that would encourage them for years to come. Exodus 15, 25. So Moses cried out to the Lord for help, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. Moses threw it into the water, and this made the water, water good to drink. It was there. At Mara, that the Lord set before them the following decree as a standard to test their faithfulness to him. He said, if you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God. Wow, there's a thought. If you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight. Well, there's thought number two. Obeying his commands and keeping all his decrees then I will not make you suffer any of the diseases I sent on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. I am Jehovah Rapha. God is your healer. God is your healer. He's, he's, he's the healer over cancer. He's the healer over COVID. He's the healer over diabetes. He's the healer over heart disease. He's the healer over asthma. He's the healer over depression. He's the healer over anger. He's the healer over emotional distress. He's the healer over arthritis. He's the healer over your marriage. He's the healer over your family. He's the healer over your relationships. He's a healer of your, of your finances. God is Jehovah Rapha. He he is your healer. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. He is the Lord who heals you. I am thankful that the God that I serve is my provider, Jehovah Jireh, that he is my peace, Jehovah Shalom, that he is my healer, Jehovah Rapha. Two chapters later, Exodus 17. This chapter tells us how the children of Israel pitched their tents at Rephidim after years of wandering through the wilderness. And if you check a Bible atlas, you will find that Rephidim is a rugged desert place near Mount Horeb. Water is scarce there. And the Bible says that when the Israelites arrived at Rephidim, there was no water for the people to drink. The people were weary of wandering. The armies of Amalek were pressing down upon them. And there was no, not so much a drop of good drinking water for them. They again were utterly defeated, forgetting about how good and how great God is. So they started complaining to Moses once again. Not about you, but if you've ever pastored, you probably know exactly how Moses felt here. A congregation goes through its dry desert places, just as the Israelites did. And at times, 
the people of God run up against one dead end after another, one problem after another. There seems to be no relief in sight. They come, you go, they come running to their pastor. They come running with a complaining spirit and say, do we have to keep on going? Do we have to keep on fighting this battle? Do we, looks like the Lord has forgotten us. Looks like the Lord has given up on us. And some even, even admit defeat. Can I tell you that defeatism is a curse? Defeatism, this past year, we've been trying to get it down in our spirits, for the very depths of our soul, that we live a victorious life. Defeatism, it can overwhelm God's people and, and make them lay down their weapons even before the battle has begun. Moses, however, he was not about to be defeated. He looked the problem straight, and he took that problem to the Lord, and he cried in Exodus 17, that Moses cried out to the Lord, what should I do with these people? They are ready to stone me. At this point, he didn't lean on his own human wisdom. He didn't run to some textbook on church administration or to some leadership expert. He turned to the Lord. In effect, he said, you brought us out here, God. You brought us out here, Lord. Now you're going to have to take care of us. So what do you want me to do? If more of God's leader would, leaders would do that today, we would see fewer people leaving the church, disgusted because of the trouble they find there. God himself gives us the best answers when God's people run up against the problem. He doesn't want us to run away from it. He doesn't. There's, there's no time. Let me tell you, David couldn't have killed Goliath with his back to him. And this occurred not a moment too soon because the Amalekites descended upon them. You can look at Exodus chapter 17 and read it. Moses turned to his commander in chief Joshua and told him to gather an army against these invaders. It says this, Moses commanded Joshua, choose some men to go out and fight the army of Amalek for us today. Tomorrow I will stand on, at the top of the hill holding the staff of God in my hand. The armies of Amalek had come out to destroy the Israelites, but Moses knew God wanted them to enter the promised land. So nobody could stop them. Nobody could destroy them. Nobody could defeat them. You can be sure that nobody could destroy you one moment before God is through using you. Nobody can stop you. If God's not done with you, you're going to keep breathing. You're going to keep moving. You're going to keep doing what God wants you to do. Let me tell you, if he has called you to evangelize the continent of Africa as he did with David Livingstone, you can be sure he won't let you die until you've gone to Africa and you preach the word. If God has called you to the gangs of New York City as he did with David Wilkerson, you can be sure he won't let you die until you've gone to New York, you've preached to the gangs, and you started a ministry to addicts called Teen Challenge. If God has called you to live in another country as he did with the Israelites, you can be sure he won't be destroyed. He won't allow you to be destroyed before you get a chance to set up house. Listen, what has God called you to? He's going to see you through. Moses knew that, so he wasn't afraid. He told Joshua that he would stand atop the mountain and raise the rod of God to remind the Israelites who was fighting for them then, that day. God was. Aaron and her, they, they had to help him hold up his hands, but he kept his promise. Moses kept his hands up, and God kept his promise. The Israelites defeated the Amalekites that day. And I'll tell you, just as some of you, I talked about the power of praise. Here we talked about Moses and his hands lifted up. Some of you, you need to live your life with your hands lifted up. Some of you need your, your wife and your children to help you hold up your hands. Just as Moses did as a promise to the Lord that you are going to see it through. You're going to see it happen. God has a plan. He has a purpose for you. Lift up your hands. Give him praise. He's worthy of it. And take time. I give it to you. You give him, lift him up and surrender. And Moses then, he built an armory to commemorate the great victory they had won. Notice what the Bible says about that monument. 
Exodus chapter 17, verse 15, it says Moses built an army, uh, an altar there and named it Yahweh Nisi. Yahweh Nisi, which means the Lord is my banner. He said, they have raised their fist against the Lord's throne. So now the Lord will be at war with Amalek. Generation after generation. Jehovah Nisi. What an unusual thing to say about God, that God is my banner. This name, this name means the Lord is my banner. Or it can mean that the Lord is my sign of victory. In other words, Moses used the name to declare that the Lord would always give him victory over the foes of his people. As long as Moses and the Israelites followed the Lord, they would have victory. He would defeat the Amalekites and any other pagan people who tried to thwart his plan or his purpose. Jehovah Nisi, God is your banner. God is your victory. He's your victory over your enemies. He's your victory over poverty. He's your victory over addiction. He's victory over yourself. Whatever battle you fight, he is your victory, Jehovah Nisi. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that God is my provider, Jehovah Jireh. I'm thankful that God is my peace, Jehovah Shalom. I'm thankful that God is my healer, Jehovah Rapha. And I'm thankful that God is my victory, Jehovah Nisi. Hallelujah. He is worthy of praise. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Maybe you're here today. You're here today and you need God to be your provider, your provider of salvation. Maybe you're not serving God right now and you'd say, wow, I didn't realize, I didn't realize all the things that God has for me. God has great things for you. God loves you. He knows right where you are and he, today he's looking, he's looking for you. And if you would just say, Pastor, that's me. I need Jesus. I need Jesus in my life. I know that I don't have peace with God. He is not my shalom right now. I need healing. I need healing in my mind. I need healing in my body. I need healing in my spirit. I need Jehovah Rapha. I need God to be my healer today. I've got so many battles that I'm trying to fight on my own. You need Jehovah Nisi your victory and today you would say pastor this day this day I declare my life to Christ this day I give him a, I give him a, it all I surrender to him if that's your prayer today would you just lift up your hand we can just join together and pray together amen God bless you God bless you father we thank you we thank you for your love and your goodness, God. We thank you for, for your son who shed his blood, paid a price that we could, we could never pay on our own. He paid a price, Father, so that we could be set free from sin. Lord, that would turn us around and put us on a new path, one that it's bound for heaven. God, we thank you for Jesus and for taking the old and it all passed away and all things becoming new. God, we thank you, Lord, that this is, this is grace. It's a gift from you to us. There's nothing that we can do to, to earn it. There's nothing we can do to deserve it. But all we do is we accept it today. And Father, we surrender to you. We surrender our lives, God. We just... Listen to what you want to do in our lives. And God, we just pray that you, you help us be obedient. Father, we thank you. Can we just pray this prayer together? Everybody repeat it after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for new life today. I give you my old self. And I accept my new life. My new self. The old man has passed away. And all things have become new. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I confess with my mouth that he is my Lord. And I believe in my heart that he rose from the dead. I thank you for a living Savior. And God, I give you my life. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Just real quickly, maybe you're here today. and I went over these pretty quickly, but the Holy Spirit has spoken to your heart and it's hard for you to be thankful for God to be your provider when you feel like you're lacking. It's hard for you to be thankful for God to be your peace when you feel worry and depression and anxiety. It's hard for you to be thankful for God to be your healer when you're walking in pain and the doctor hasn't given you good news. It's hard for you to be thankful when, for God to be your victory when you feel like you're defeated and you're hurt. Just as I've challenged you all morning, I'm going to challenge you today. Let's give it to Jesus. Let's give it to Jesus. If I could just ask you for five minutes, just five minutes today, if, if there's something that's heavy on your heart and God and you're dealing with it and God has spoken to you, I just want to take five minutes and pray for you. If that's you, just come here forward. I want to pray for you right where you are. Just come forward. Step out. You want your victory. You want your peace. You want your healing. You want your provision today. Step out into the aisle. Come, and we're just going to pray one for another today. Just step out. This is your faith. This is your faith. This is your faith. Taking a step. That's you today. Just going to pray over you real quickly. Almost every single verse that we read, it talked about being obedient. And I'm not going to push or pry. It's between you and the Lord, but if the Lord's telling you to come up here, it's part of being obedient. I don't, you know, I don't know why it's we we resisted so much. Most of the times that I got my biggest blessing was right up here in this place. Amen. Can I just have some of you guys that are prayer warriors or some of our leaders just come up and stand behind these and let's just pray for them and get behind them and let them know that we're with them in prayer and just believing with them. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, that not for a second, not for a moment, have you forgotten anybody that is here. I thank you, God. God, that you are... You not only are our father, but you're our partner. You're our friend, God. And you, t you help us through every circumstance, every situation, Lord. And Lord, for those that came forward and need provision, Jehovah Jireh, Lord. Lord, I, I, I just declare a miracle on the way, Father. Father, I, I, I thank you, Lord, that they're going to find provision in ways that they never, never thought. Lord, it, the we try so hard in one way and maybe Lord there's another way that you want provision Lord I just pray Father that you would give every single one of us the wisdom to know to step out in faith to believe Lord I pray for your peace the peace that passes all understanding God God as we're here today Lord we, we stepped out in faith Father, Father as we're battling a battle God that just we're getting tired. We're getting weary. Lord, I just pray, God, that you would just 
shower us with your peace, God, the peace that passes all understanding. Jehovah Shalom, God, you are our peace. And we put that, we put that in our hearts, in our spirits, Lord. God, those that came forward for healing, Lord. Lord, whatever area that healing may need, maybe in their bodies, maybe in a relationship, maybe in their home, God, maybe maybe just, just in, in a situation that they're going through, Father. Father, I speak healing. I speak Jesus into that situation. God, I thank you for your presence in our lives, God. Lord, I thank you. God, I thank you for victory, Lord. You are Jehovah Nisi. You are our victory. You are our banner that, that declares that our lives has victory. Not because of who we are, but because you are. And Lord, Lord, I command every every enemy. I command every every demon in hell. I command every every work that the enemy is putting against every believer in this house right now. I command him to lay down his weapons and flee. Devil, we resist you in Jesus' name. We take authority, the same authority that Christ has you have Christ has given to us, that spirit that raised him from the dead. We have that in us. And God, through that spirit, through that authority, through that this decor, declaration, Lord. Lord, we declare victory. We declare it, God. God, we declare this year a year of victory. And Father, that we see that victory this year, God. Father, we thank you for it. We thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it. Lord, we just give you thanks. We give you thanks for what you're doing in every single life. Lord, as we stepped out in faith today, as we stepped out in faith, every step we took toward this toward this altar, Lord. Lord, just it strengthened our faith. It strengthened us in body. It strengthened us in, in the spirit, Lord. And Lord, I thank you, God. God, that as we stepped out, you began to work in every situation, every circumstance. You began to move. There's a shift taking place in lives and in, in hearts and in finances and in bodies right now, God. God, and I thank you, Lord. Lord, that no matter what the enemy, that no matter what the weapon the enemy is trying to, trying to bring up against us, it will not prosper. God, I thank you for that. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Can we just lift our hands up like Moses and just give him a shout of victory and give him a shout of thanks? thank you thank you lord we give you praise he's worthy amen god bless you guys love you guys so much have a blessed thanksgiving just remember you are what you eat oh i'm eating ham i'm a ham bless you guys we love you we'll see you next week you don't want to miss it we'll be starting a message called more than a manger <laughs>